This is MuggleCast, the Harry Potter podcast discussing everything about J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World. All right, welcome to MuggleCast episode 353. Hi, Micah. Hi, Andrew. Wow, you're right in front of me. I am. This is staring right at you, talking right to (laughs) you. Ew, stop staring at me. So, where are we? Why are we together? We are uh, in Orlando. What? You're enjoying a nice uh, Starbucks coffee. Mmm. And uh, we're down here for uh, the Harry Potter celebration. We were invited. And we accepted. There's no Eric. Woo! I mean, <laughs> oh, man. One of our listeners who we met at the Leaky Cauldron wanted us to uh, give him a hard time for not coming. Yes. So, Eric, you're in trouble because you, you, were, you were sought after specifically by listeners of the show in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And he was a hipster, so you know he's serious. Yeah. Portland man. <laughs> Had the beard and everything. Sorry, man, I'm forgetting your name, but I want to say Jacob, but I might be wrong. Until you're corrected, his <laughs> name is Jacob. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so we're here. Uh, it's Saturday. Celebration of Harry Potter kicked off on Friday night. This is both of our first times being here. Eric's never been either. It's basically an official Harry Potter convention. They've been doing it for a few years now. Funnily enough, it started as... had this horrible name. It was like... A Celebration of Harry Potter Home Entertainment. The, the, the first one was like to promote the new box set like five or six years ago. And I just remember the name being so cheesy because it, it was so like corporate. It was terrible. But anyway, it's kind of turned into, now that we have the play, the spin-off movies, the apps, um, the exhibition, the cine concerts, like, it's turned into this place for all the official arms of the Harry Potter franchise Mm -hmm. to come together and kind of promote their stuff. Yeah, Uh, and, and just to go back to what you had said, it's not our first time at the park. It's our first time here at this event. Expo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that said, I agree. It, it, last night when we were, we were there, uh, and, and we'll go through all the different events that we uh, had a chance to attend, but the sort of the outdoor kickoff celebration that they had on the soundstage there. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Right. There's a little uh, walkie-talkie action going on behind us. The uh, the cleaning crew is uh, getting their updates or something. We're podcasting, people. <laughs> Keep it down. So uh, it, it, I thought it was good, but it, it did have a very corporate feel to it. Yeah. I think that'll be our most general complaint. Um, so what, what we'll do, we'll go in order of everything, like you said, that we've – been experiencing here over the past 24 hours so before the opening night event which was friday night uh we decided to go to anjonitos i believe it's called it's a mexican restaurant in city walk universal city walk and the bartender (laughs) was really funny we told him we were there for this harry celebration of harry potter he's like oh yeah a lot of people are coming in he's like hey Hey, I got this tequila. It tastes just like butterbeer. I swear, it tastes just like butterbeer. Everybody I show it to, I'm like, doesn't it taste like butterbeer? And we're like, well, we're going to have to try now because we have to bring it up on the podcast. 11.50 a shot later. I think that's what it was. (laughs) He's got this great tequila. Tastes like butterbeer. Yeah. One reason I don't buy shots because they're very expensive and especially in a tourist area like uh, City Walk. But he was right. He let us sniff the bottle, and apparently it was part of George Clooney's company, tequila company, that he sold for a lot of money. Um, and so we sniffed it, and it did smell like butterbeer. And I was like, okay, butterscotchy, kind of creamy. But then we took a shot, and we actually split one shot. <laughs> it was it was a healthy portion. Even it the was. split shot. It was. If you did a whole shot, you wouldn't have been able to attend the celebration. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. We didn't want to get like drunk on tequila before working. Um that said, we also had margaritas. Or at least yeah. I did. <laughs> mojito, yeah. Yeah, you had a mojito. Um and so we tasted it. It didn't really taste like butterbeer. I think the the taste of tequila was a little overwhelming. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it it was good. Uh, I would say Mike, that was his name. The bartender is certainly a personality over there. So if if you're 
in town, go over there, uh, check it out, and tell him uh, that we sent you. Yeah, he said he'd listen to the podcast. He doesn't really know anything about Harry Potter. And he, he, he was like, hey, hey, check this out. And he turns to his bar back and he goes, hey, Dobby. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I call my bar back Dobby. I'm like, huh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they not were, only that, his bar back knew more about Harry Potter than he did. He, he mentioned that he had just uh, binge watched all eight films on, on HBO. Uh, on HBO. So yeah. there's a plug for the uh, the films moving over to HBO. Oh, it's, it, it tells me that a lot of people are actually watching all that. Maybe yeah. the more casual people. Fit. And I would say both of them are really smart in the sense that they know what's in town. And I'm, I'm sure they did that knowing that the celebration was going to be here. Yeah. Uh, and you know, the more you know about it, the more easy it is to uh, convince your customers to take tequila shots. So, <laughs> right, yeah, it sold us. He was like, yeah, I'm going to tell my boss that you guys were here for – you were doing the podcast and, and uh, you guys liked the butterbeer shot. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, anyway, so then after that, we drunkenly stumbled over to <laughs> – no, I'm kidding. We walked over to the uh, – they did a Q&A with the cast members who were here um, – just for the press. They, the cast members did do a couple more Q&As today for attendees. Um, Natalia Tena was there. That It's her first time coming to Celebration. Stan is... Oh, you did not spell the name right in this talk. <laughs> Stan. I think it's just Yanevsky. Is it? no, I thought it was like Islavsky or something like All that. Right. Google it. it. Who else was there? With pronunciation. <laughs> uh, James and Oliver Phelps, who, mm-hmm. who have become staples at, at these events... And many uh, fan events really around the world. And Bonnie Wright, uh, who played uh, Ginny Weasley. You are right. It's I was uh, His first name is Stanislav. I was thinking that was part of the last name. Stanislav. I thought it was Chinchilla. And, <laughs> he was making jokes about Chinchillas the whole uh, press conference. And, like, there's nothing really to talk about there for us because they were in the movies that are almost 10 years old now. So it's like there's not really much to say. Um, the questions were kind of, we didn't ask any questions. Um, yeah, it, I, th- I agree with you. I think it's hard because it, it would have been different had they had an actor from Fantastic Beasts, which I think, you know, if it's something that they can do moving forward, they probably should because it just makes it a little bit more timely and, and more questions are able to be asked. I think when you have those cast members who, have really been out of the films for, like you said, almost 10 years now, it's hard to come up with questions. I mean, mm-hmm. you could ask them about Fantastic Beasts, and I think there was one question about Jude Law playing Dumbledore. Yeah. I thought the question was actually going to be about Johnny Depp playing oh. Grindelwald. <laughs> but I don't, think, I don't think their PR team would have let that one slide. Through. I would have walked. I would have walked outside. Okay, bye. It's going to get <laughs> awkward. Bye. Uh, Bonnie Wright did answer that question about Jude Law. She was just sort of like, I don't think he needs any advice. If you watch the films, you'll get a sense of Dumbledore and he'll bring his own thing to Dumbledore. Um, but yeah. Okay. So then after that was the opening night event. And this is kind of, you know, the big thing. Um, they do it in Universal Studios, but not in one of the theme parks. They do it on this like theater stage. I almost said theater to be pretentious um so basically what happened was all of the potter brands that are here kind of all came out and said hello and the stars came out and said hello as well and then at the end was an orchestra performance but we'll get to that a little later um basically it it felt like a whole infomercial for all the various harry potter things like there wasn't one big like announcement to get Everybody really jazzed up, um, except for uh, when two people from Pottermore came up. Um, they basically talked about what they've done in the past year with the Wizarding World Book Club and with breaking news. Um, they do seem to position themselves as like a source, like the breaking news source for Harry Potter news. That's kind of how they were putting themselves. Um, but their quote unquote announcement was, was, was an announcement that was actually made earlier in the day, which is that Quidditch through the ages is now going to be an audiobook narrated by Andrew Lincoln. I thought you were going to say Andrew Sims. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was going to say uh, somebody else who I know. <laughs> um, uh, Andrew Lincoln of the walking dead. Mm. 
And that was a surprise because I just never thought this Walking Dead TV star, he's like one of the biggest names on television right now because The Walking Dead is so huge, would narrate Quidditch Through the Ages. Um, he is going to be, it sounded like, in character as Kenneth Wispy, Kenneth Wisp, Wisp. Yeah, you better look that one up too. <laughs> um, so. Everybody will remember that Fantastic Beasts got an audiobook last year with Eddie Redmayne. So, um, I, I when he first of all, I didn't recognize who the person was, but just based on the reaction of everybody else around me, could tell that he was somebody famous uh, that he was going to be narrating this book, and I, I thought it was maybe even going into the direction of there's a new set of films coming out or. <laughs> yeah. Or, I don't know, something else. Uh, that uh, I think it's a cool announcement. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. I, I think th this goes back to the panel discussion that we were talking about and them needing to incorporate Fantastic Beasts. Mm -hmm. And look, we're still here Saturday afternoon. Another piece of news could break later on tonight or tomorrow. We don't know. But I think that there, there has to be a bigger hook. Mm -hmm. There has to be a bigger news announcement than Quidditch Through the Ages getting an audiobook or, as we'll briefly mention a little bit, uh, the exhibition moving on to Milan from where it is right now. Yeah. <clears throat> that got kind of lackluster response. I just... Yeah. <laughs> it's been like 17 places now, so it's exciting for people in Italy, but for everybody else, it's like, eh. By the way, the, the author is Kenilworthy Wisp author of Quidditch of the Ages. So Andrew Lincoln is going to do him, uh, be him in this audiobook. So I guess that'll be interesting to see how he brings to life Kenilworthy Wisp. Um, and I guess it'll be fun to listen to. Sure, why not? But you also wonder, like, since they did turn Fantastic Beasts into a film series, could they turn Quidditch of the Ages into a film series? And I'm sure Warner Brothers would be highly interested in that, but Fantastic Beasts had the benefit of J.K. Rowling wanting to connect Newt to Dumbledore and Grindelwald. Mm -hmm. So, like, does she have a you know a kernel of an idea that she wants to use for Quidditch? Or they just eh. could be maybe Ken Wisp shows up in a uh, Kenilworthy. Ken oh, I just shortened it. <laughs> Kenisp <laughs> shows uh, but, up. In Fantastic Beasts, in, in some way. <laughs> As Andrew Lincoln. Andrew Lincoln yeah, playing There you him. go. <laughs> yeah, because now I'm thinking maybe this guy could be uh, play him in a movie. But Andrew Lincoln did sound like he's actually a fan of the Wizarding World, so that was kind of a surprise. He mentioned that he has kids and he reads the books to his kids in a press release. I think he said that, so that's cute. But um, So that was like that announcement, and, and that audiobook will be out in March. Like you said, Harry Potter exhibition is going to Milan. The Phelps twins went up on stage and were like kind of bragging about all this because they go to like every opening. So they were even like they been they were like yeah we've been all over the world for this place. And I was like oh, I'm jealous. Yeah, and <laughs> nothing against Milan, um, amazing city. But Italy sucks. There. No, no, Italy does not <laughs> suck. Uh, you know, making that kind of announcement. In, in front of what I'm assuming is a predominantly U.S.-based crowd, I think they probably would have gotten a little bit more excitement, a little bit more of a response if they said hey, it's coming back to the U.S., whether it's coming to Orlando or it's going somewhere that it hasn't been before. I don't think it's actually been. We were I was looking at the cities when we were on the expo floor this morning of all the places that it's been. Uh, it actually hasn't been here uh, in – in Orlando, which oh, I think yeah. would be a, a huge additional draw for people. So if you could come here, go to the theme park, and then also check out the exhibition, that's something yeah. they should really consider. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, 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 yeah, you kill two birds with one stone. It's like going to um, when when the Harry Potter exhibition, the, the Magic of Harry Potter exhibition opens up in New York later this year. You can see Chris Child at the same time on Broadway. Mm. Two birds, one stone. Um, Fantastic Beasts, they didn't mention it. You know, they showed the title real quick, 
But, like, I thought that, you know, we were talking about how they should use this to break more news. They should have just, like, released a new film still. What would it have taken just to share one of a billion photos that they have? Mm. You know, here's a new look at the movie. Ah! Okay, we're moving on. Just give us something. Give us something. Mm -hmm. We were expecting booze. To... <laughs> and they said, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Nobody booed, though. Not the right place to do that. Um, and then at the, the end of it was kind of capped off with this performance of uh, selections from the Harry Potter movies by the Orlando Philharmonic. Um, this was to promote the Harry Potter Cine Concerts. Many of our listeners have emailed in raving about these things. Um, a live orchestra will perform while the movie plays. So you get to watch the movie with dialogue and they create the soundtrack, the score. And it's really cool. It was fun to watch that because neither of us have been to one of these live concert movie concerts before. Uh, they played, they did a couple of scenes from movie one, movie three, and movie four. Yeah, they th no, they did all first four. Oh, they did they ended two? with uh, Chamber of Secrets. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, of course they did Hedwig's theme. That's what they started out with, I think. Yeah. Um, from Sorcerer's Stone, and then. They went into uh, Goblet of Fire. They they actually said that they played the full waltz from the Yule Ball, uh, which didn't make the cut in the movie. Obviously, it's shortened. And um, speaking of, we actually had Patrick Doyle, who composed uh, the, the score for Goblet of Fire on the show. I have to go back and check what episode that was. Um, he may have had a few drinks before he joined us, but... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's a good listen to go back. Uh, that's your uh, This Week in Mugglecast history. Uh, and then when it, uh, also the scene uh, from the first task of the yes. Triwizard Tournament. Uh, and uh, That was interesting because they would stop performing at points. Like in the movie, when the dragon comes out, there's no music. Mm -hmm. And as the conductor of this Philharmonic um, mentioned. Uh, mentioned, you know, sometimes no music really emphasizes a scene as well, or where the music will start emphasizes a scene, as we all know from going to movies and, you know, having those breaks in the music and then it suddenly kicks back in. So it was cool to see a live performance of that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, for Prisoner of Azkaban, it was the, the Flight of the Hippogriff, Harry uh, and Buck Beak. Mm, mm -hmm. And then it ended with kind of the, the end sequence from, from Chamber of Secrets. But I thought it was really cool, uh, as you had mentioned, this first time seeing something like that live and in person. And I thought uh, it was a nice touch. Yeah. And I think the reason we saw only the first four movies is because I think that's really all they're up to in terms of performing. Uh, but from what we've heard, the goal is to play all the movies in cities all over the country, maybe all over the world. It's put, it's put on by cine concerts, I believe. And they were there. They were here too. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's about it for the opening ceremony. But then they also debuted this new lights Hog show on Hogwarts castle. Now during Christmas time at Hogwarts, they had debuted for the very first time a projection show on the castle. So only a few months later, they've already got a second one, and this is going to be running all year. Like I just said, it started this weekend. Harry, Bot Harry Potter celebra <laughs> celebration of Harry Potter people got the first look. It was a cool show. I think for you, this was the first time seeing a show on the castle. I had seen something like this in... Uh, at the opening of Hollywood. So what do you think of seeing the castle all lit up like that? Yeah, I, I thought it was uh, really cool and um, unique kind of experience. I know they do other things like this at, at Disney and, and other parks. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you, you basically get a little bit of a story. Um, in this case, it's the Sorting Hat or the voice of the Sorting Hat, uh, just talking about the different houses of Hogwarts. And, and you see it lit up in the different colors for the different houses and, and some fireworks there at the end. Uh, yeah. I thought it was, uh, it was really well done and definitely recommend that if people are coming down here for vacation, they go to the park to stay through. I know it can be a long day. We already took one break. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had an early morning. That, that is true. <laughs> Six, 6.30, uh, 
wake up on a Saturday isn't exactly uh, yeah, in my I'm wheelhouse. On, plus, I'm on Central Time, so I needed a uh, nap man. in the afternoon. But, and then I woke up to Micah saying I got pizza, and that got me <laughs> that got me out of bed real quick. Yep, yep. So uh, yeah, I'd just say stay in the park and uh, check out the show. Yeah, the show it, it wasn't too long. It was definitely it felt longer or it felt shorter than the Christmas show. I want to say it was only about five minutes. Yeah, um, it was. It may have even been a little less shorter. than that because I recorded pretty much all of it on my phone, and I don't even think it got up to five. Oh, minutes. really? I was. If if I were to critique it at all, I would say it's a little too short because if you're trying to draw people to come out for an evening show of sorts, I think you want to give them more than just four-ish minutes. Um, and this idea, this whole projection thing, started at the grand opening of. Boys in World Hollywood, and they had a similar show with the houses that Micah was describing, but I swear it was longer, and I've been meaning to go on YouTube and compare the lengths of the, the two shows, because I'm sure last night's show is now up there. Um, and they had uh, it on repeat. Do they do that, or, or is it just going to be one time every night, that's it? It's going to be a couple times every night, I think. I know this weekend, I heard earlier that they're going to be kind of running it throughout the night for celebration attendees. Um... But what was also cool was the people who had, like, the premium packages or whatever, they came into the park last night after that opening event that we just described, and they had food out mm -hmm. and desserts and free butterbeer. I put down three butterbeers in, like, the half hour we were there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how you uh, were able to fall asleep. With that much sugar in your blood, but I uh, you... <laughs> pretty easily you're right. But we we did we did a lot of walking around. That is true. So uh, <laughs> burn, burn it off, burn those calories off. You yeah. feel that? I mean, as somebody who I don't put sugar in my coffee and I don't drink soda, so like as somebody who goes from like very little sugar during the day to suddenly drinking even one of those, you feel it in your chest really quick. Yeah, I tried to get Micah to have a hot butter beer when I, I was like, "Hey, I'm going to get one." And he was like, "No, I'm good for right now." I'm like, what? You haven't had hot butter beer. It's a cool night. It's your first night here. What are you doing? Yeah. And then today, he says it again to me today. I thought he was joking this time. No, I went for the regular butter beer. I'm yeah. Like, but you're, you're not you're not as big of a fan, I don't think. The hot butter beer is very, very good. Better than I remember. Mm -hmm. um, I poured a little coffee in it this morning, too. Made a hot butter beer coffee. It was there quite nice. There you go. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, I, I did end up trying it last night. It was good. Uh, and then I figured I'd mix it up a little bit today and go with the uh, the regular butter beer. So, and you prefer frozen, not frozen, just oh, the regular, the regular yeah, because you can get the you can get the frozen kind as well. Something we actually haven't mentioned yet. Um, I saw on Twitter a week or two ago that Wizarding World Hollywood is going to be selling hot butter beer year round, mm. which I think is a very good idea because it's like. Hot butter beer does not need to be a seasonal drink. You drink hot coffee all year long. Like, why does hot butter beer need to only be around in the winter? Mm -hmm. Especially in LA, where it's warm all year anyway. Or here in Orlando, where it's or here, yeah, yeah. But I, I think for for this evening, I'm probably going more so fire whiskey or some <laughs> of that. Uh, what's it, dragon scale, scale beer? Yeah, that's yeah. Which, uh, yeah, that's okay. I, I, I'm kind of picky with beers, but the Dragon Scale's good. There's one, they, they have one or two others that just not my type of beer. Yeah. Um, just they, no more uh, hot butter beer? Butter beer tequila. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, they, they do genuinely sell fire whiskey. We saw it at lunch today. It was like breakfast today. It was like 12 bucks. I'm, yeah, I'm assuming it's a. It's a shot. Yeah, probably. It was – so we got breakfast there. That's my first time eating breakfast in the Wizarding World parks. It was standard. I would say their lunch and dinner is a lot more authentic British cuisine. Um, but we looked – we were walking out around like noon and my god, it was crowded. Yeah. Uh, we must have just got in there because – I would not have waited. That line that was – I think they said around 90 minutes. Oh, no thank you. Before we continue telling you about Celebration of Harry Potter, we have a new sponsor this week, Bright Cellars. Have you ever tried an Accio spell without any luck? Well, now's your chance to really make some magic happen. Bright Cellars is the personalized wine service that allows you to summon four bottles of wine each month 
something Professor Flitwick may even struggle with. <laughs> Simply visit brightsellers.com slash mugglecast and take an easy seven-question quiz. A little bit of magic will happen based on those answers, and Bright Sellers will show you the four wines that are most likely to match your personal taste. I actually did this a couple of days ago, and the quiz couldn't be easier to take. It's very simple and straightforward, and right after that, you have four wines that easily match your tastes. And if you don't like necessarily one that pops up, you can easily click a button, and they give you another one. Mm. And uh, it's really cool algorithm that they have in place, and uh, the wine is actually on its way to me right now, and I can't wait to check really? it out. The best part is we've charmed 50% off the first month for listeners of MuggleCast. So all you have to do is visit brightsellers.com slash MuggleCast to get wine summoned right to your door. That's bright like a light bulb, sellers like a wine cellar, dot com slash MuggleCast. So <laughs> let's talk about today, Saturday. Yeah. Um, so 6.30 wake up. <laughs> Six thirty. So what they did, they, they did a they did a media preview, and we'll talk about why in a little bit. Um, they did, they had the media come in to see the show floor. This is where like all the brands have their stuff on display that you can try out and take pictures and whatnot. So we went in at eight oh five because it was opening officially at eight thirty. Oh, and I heard while we were waiting for the virtual reality thing, that apparently that was actually going to be 90 minutes, but for some reason they cut it back. Hmm. Um, but so good thing we did go to this media preview because overall these two show floors, they were in separate sound stages. They got very crowded. And the thing was, you had to wait in line just to get into one of these sound stages. And you have to wait in more lines inside to like play the app, do the virtual reality do the audible trivia thing, um, take a picture inside the Sorcerer's Stone cover. All cool, fun stuff. But it's like you have to wait in line just to get in. And apparently the line was like two hours, I think Haley wow. said. Didn't she say 120 minutes or 90 minutes? It was it was well over an hour. Um, yeah, there, there, no question. It was definitely over an hour. Just looking at the line and, and I give a lot of credit to those people for, for waiting out there. Luckily, it was really nice out the weather was. is is pretty nice here in like the 60s or so so you're not getting that sun beating down on you like you would if you were here for one of the cons over the over the summertime usually they're in what like august yeah and it's pretty toasty out so uh i like i said i give fans a lot of credit for for waiting in those lines uh, but a lot of cool stuff i thought on both of those show floors uh, you mentioned the cover of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. You could get it's your the first thing we did. Your photo taken inside of the cover. Yeah, I posted mine. Mike didn't want to take one. Why didn't we want to take one? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, take one. Oh well, because remember, I voted for the the UK edition. Oh, on the last episode. Uh, the last so you episode. Didn't wanna... Yeah, so I can't go supporting the <laughs> the US edition. Yeah, right. Of course. Um, so Scholastic had the Sorcerer's Stone, you know, a big version of the book that you can stand in and they edited out Harry so you can kind of become Harry and they had brooms that you could pose with. Um, I posted mine on Instagram if you want to see it. Um, my username on there is Andrew Sims. Um, it was, oh my God, a door keeps slamming outside. I want to go and body slam whoever that is. Um, anyway. I was that was fun. I'm glad I did that. Micah took a bad picture of me at first. Then I made him go back and take another we, picture. We, well, clearly it was good enough to go on Instagram. So. The second one was, yeah. The second one, yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. And they also okay. So I guess the other kind of newsworthy thing is that they had um, concept art by the new illustrator of the 20th anniversary Harry Potter books. Um, and they had it printed out. Oh, and the illustrator's here. Yeah. He was doing a signing at some point Yeah, today. he was on the stage last night. They interviewed him for a little bit, and uh, you're right. He is uh, He is here, and uh, you did ask the person from Scholastic, is this going to inevitably be the cover of uh, the 20th anniversary edition of Sorcerer's Stone? And, and she said, no, no, it's just concept art. Everything yeah. else is still 
in the works. So we'll see where this uh, picture ends up uh, when the book finally is released. Right. Uh, the other cool thing that they had was uh, a poster version, which actually was a pretty nice print of the Jim K illustrated edition of Prisoner of Azkaban. Yes, it's very big. Yeah. It wouldn't fit in the lockers when we tried to go on the Diagon Alley ride. Um, oh, you didn't? It's in your room. Uh, it's it's really, really nice. It's like the full artwork, so it covers the backside too, I think. Um, so that was cool. I'll have to do something with it, or maybe I'll give mine to Eric since he loves Prisoner of Azkaban so much, and that's just the type of person I am. Nice. And you just said it on the show, so unless you cut it out in editing. Nobody tell him. We'll see if he actually listens to this. If he does, then he'll be like, hey, can I have it? And Where nobody it? tweet or text or do anything. I'm going to go inspect my guy. I'm not happy with this noise. I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to keep everybody posted here as Andrew goes to uh, yell at whoever's slamming the door consistently out there. He is uh, interrogating the uh, cleaning crew right now and slamming the door in their face. The maid, I, the maid outside has no idea what that banging was. I guess we're just hearing things, Micah. Clearly, yeah. <laughs> anyway. It's probably some kid that keeps like slamming the door or running from one room to another. <laughs> <laughs> People might not even hear it on the microphone. They probably won't. They probably just think we're crazy. Um, so, uh, And then uh, they handed out some cool uh, 20th anniversary pins. So there's just like a lot of, as, as I think people would expect in most expos, there's just like a lot of handouts, a lot of things that they're trying to give away so that you go ahead and you promote them uh, after yeah. the fact. Yeah. I was. I thought that they were actually going to unveil the first cover here. Because mm. you might remember that the uh, Kazu Kabishi covers, they revealed those one at a time. Like a couple weeks apart from one another. So like we were always like looking forward to the next cover release. Which, that was a slow period of Harry Potter news. So that was like the big news back at that time. Um uh, so I thought, like, they would at least release the first one. They didn't. Apparently, the classic person was also saying, you know, it's changed a lot since this early concept art. But but I like this Harry. I think the Harry looks good. I don't have it in here. I'm just pointing into the air at nothing. Um, mm -hmm. It looks good. So I look forward to seeing those mm -hmm. covers. Yeah, and there's also the the fact that more stuff could be revealed later on today. I know I said that earlier, but... Yeah, I don't think so, though. You don't I think, think so? Nah. We're done. We're, We're done. done. Okay. Going home. Um, so one of the one of the second, uh, the second thing we did was the studio tour... Tour... Studio tour tour? <laughs> studio tour exhibit? <laughs> yeah, we, and by the way, we didn't cut the line for that. No, we didn't. No. We could have. We were we, good. We, we waited in line like everybody else. <laughs> Even though uh, we had a few people uh, that were also part of the media that kind of snuck in front of, yeah. these, of these very nice people that we met that were waiting very patiently yeah. to, uh, to get we into got, this. We exhibition. got in the line early. Otherwise, I would have tried to go into yeah, the exhibition. No, 100%. <laughs> By the time we made it to the front of the line, because there was another uh, media crew that must have been in there capturing B-roll for some footage I that they're going to use – Later on, I don't know why they didn't do that when uh, we had opened or the yeah. media thing. Yeah, what the heck? We were all there probably a good 15, 20 minutes before uh, the doors officially opened. So, yeah. anyway, so in the studio tour thing, they had a couple cool things. They had the Goblet of Fire, which was very cool, and the like the blue mist flame came out of it, yep. and then it would change colors, and then a little piece of paper shot out of it right in front of us. Yep. And the piece of paper shot over to a woman, older woman, who was clearly a Harry Potter fan. That was, so that was kind of, kind of cool. She was there with her husband. Um, and then she got to keep the little piece of paper, which I guess had Harry's name on it. Did yeah. you see whose name? I didn't see. I, I think they asked her to read it, right? I think so, but she was quiet. Yeah. So, so that was cool. That that was cool. And you you got to see how... Oh, that's that's what it was. A lot of – was it this weekend or is it just the studio tour piece of it that was focusing on special effects? I think they were like this year – this year's studio tour area of Harry Potter celebration would f focus on the practical effects. I think they bring a couple of different things each year. Right, right. So we got to see how the Goblet of Fire worked and – from my understanding, that was the actual Goblet of Fire that was used in in the films, and uh, they talked it up during the the opening night. Um, 
that we went to and said that it was going to be here. And uh, it was cool. They also had some floating candles when we walked in and they gave us a little bit of background there about how they initially used real candles. uh, But the flames used to get so hot and so high that they would actually snap the strings that they were Mm. being held on and the candles would end up falling down onto the tables in the Great Hall. So they had to go for fake candles. Yeah. They burned and killed about 12 children (laughs) before they figured out how to... uh, Put in fake candles. Very sad. Those are the deleted scenes that are never going to make, <laughs> <laughs> never going to make the cut. Uh, that goblet of fire is still damaged from uh, Dumbledore yelling. Did you put the, your name in that goblet of fire? <laughs> Very, I can't believe they can't, they haven't been able to repair uh, it from that scream. <laughs> yup. So uh, they had proclamations as well, which was cool. Yeah, seeing those and and also Umbridge's outfit, right? And it was smoking. It was. So that was from when Fred and George, right, set off all those fireworks. Yeah, that was really cool. I tried to film that on camera, but it was hard to see because the smoke was kind of light. Um, But that was really cool. Um, Then they had the letter spitter, for Mm. lack of a better word. So, like, it was in the chimney, right? No, it was the front door, I thought. Oh, the front door, yeah. Um, so, uh, it's like the front door at Privet Drive, and then she would press a button, and it would just spit out tons of letters, and uh, the, the Hogwarts inv- uh, invite, you know, right. your Hogwarts letter, and they were all addressed to Harry, but the cool thing was, everybody got to keep one of the letters as well. Yeah. So, like, they that was spit a nice out, touch. then we picked it up off the floor, and they were like, and you get to keep it! Mm-hmm. So, that was... So, now... Nice. Switching gears to a photo Andrew wouldn't take, but I did, since he was giving me hell about <laughs> now not we're even. Now yeah. we're even, yeah. So as you were walking out, uh, they had inside of Privet Drive, and they mentioned that the carpet was the actual carpet from inside of the Dursleys' home. Uh, that was surprising. Yeah, and I'm really surprised that they, Cause of they were, all things you could think that would get messed up, that would probably be at the top of the list. Right, because right? they were like, don't put your bags on it because we want to take care of it. But f- but you were stepping on it. Right. Like, your feet and your weight are going to do more damage than, like, your bag with your five-ounce poster in it. <laughs> true, true. So uh, you got your picture taken under the cake uh, that uh, Dobby inevitably drops on Mrs. Mason in uh, Chamber of Secrets. And then you could go get your uh, picture taken underneath a inflated Aunt Marge from uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. So... She didn't have her head, though. Like, if her head was on that, I would totally have taken that picture. Yeah, it was a little weird. It was just the costume, I guess. But for somebody who's never been over to the studio tour in London, uh, it was cool to kind of get a glimpse of what you can expect. And I've been to the exhibition when it was in New York, uh, but obviously, and and Andrew, you could probably speak more to this, just being in the actual sets and and seeing the actual props that were used... It was it was really cool. The studio tour was amazing. Um, you could spend a whole day there. You kind of peruse it at your leisure. I think I reviewed it last year, two years ago now. Um, but I actually never had. I didn't do see like any of the practical practical effects in action when I was there. So I didn't see that goblet of fire. I didn't see the the letter spitter. I guess they're doing demos of that throughout the day at studio tour. I don't know, but. Um, but so that was nice to see some practical effects in action. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We also met Mina Lima. These are the two uh, partners who have designed all of the graphic artwork in the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts film series. I've raved about them before. They have a uh, they have a pop up shop. Pop up shop, yeah. But it's like permanent, so it's not it's not just a pop up anymore. It's like a four story thing, right around the corner from the Cursed Child in London, and you can buy all this gorgeous artwork. I think I've talked, I've, I've spoken about buying a couple pieces now. So it's nice to actually meet them. Uh, maybe we'll get an interview with them later uh, in the year, or next year. Um, we met a couple of the people who work for them as well. One of who is well, whom is a Muggle Cast listener. And um, they were so sweet, and they said they're going to be updating their store probably, again, within the next... They had just updated it a few months ago. Oh, no, like last June. And they're going to update it within another year with all new Fantastic Beasts 2 stuff. Mm -hmm. So that place, which I learned this time, that, you know, they're constantly updating it with new stuff to look at. 
they had on display here a Daily Prophet compilation piece. So it had like nine front pages from the Daily Prophet all on one piece. And I really want that now because I've always loved... What do you... What? No, go ahead. I've always loved the Daily Prophet front pages. Mm -hmm. But I have never known really which one to buy or even like consider buying. So I bought like a magnet set that they had. But now they have this compilation piece and I want it so bad. That might have to be my next oh, purchase. Boy. Yeah, and you said you might be headed over to London later this year, so hopefully... Uh, talk myself into it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or they'll talk you into it once they I see know. you. I know. I was almost hoping the, the girl who listened to the MagraCast was going to be like, hey, you guys want a little discount? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but totally agree with you. Um, they're very passionate about the series. Like you mentioned, not only do they work on all Potter films, but they're now working on Fantastic Beasts, so... Really looking forward to uh, <clears throat> what is to come there. And we actually picked up, you're mentioning the uh, <laughs> Daily Prophet covers, right? Yeah. We, I think one of the items that we picked up for a Patreon giveaway. Let me see. All right. I know one is, is a Marauder's Map set of uh, postcards designed by Mina Lima. The other is. Oh, wait, I lost them. I don't have them. Oh. No. <laughs> Convenient. <laughs> The Hogwarts series postcard set, and then the Daily Prophet postcard set. I'm just gonna keep this one. Yeah. So these <laughs> these are the. This is the print you were talking about, except they're uh, yes, twenty postcards individual. Yeah. In in this set, so we'll be giving those out as part of our monthly giveaways over on Patreon. So uh, definitely uh, keep an eye out for that. Yeah, these are these are cool too because you can only buy these at Mina Lima's shop or on their website. You can't get these at like, you know, stores at the mall or something. So they're they're cool collector's items and you can do whatever you want with the postcards. Display them or mail them. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't mail them. They're too pretty. Um, okay, so one of the big things here that we were very excited to check out was this new app, Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. They had a whole display and... We each played on an iPad. We played a demo. So, like, our character was already created for us. And we kind of jumped into um, uh, the, the Sorting Hat Ceremony and then Charms class. Those were, like, the two things. It seems fine. I hesitate to, like, really review it until properly playing it. It's not an open world game like we were hoping the, the the guy was telling me that there are some things that are kind of open world i noticed that you could drag um the room that you were in and kind of go left or right with the camera but other than that you're not like just like openly perusing the castle right yeah i would agree with you i i'm not gonna really make any uh conclusions until i get a chance to play the the full game uh i thought that one actually one question that came to mind is what's the de like what's the demographic like, who are you trying to hit with this game you know because if you just say harry potter fans obviously that ranges from kids who are what five or six years old all the way up to those who are older so i like i don't know well i wouldn't say it's a challenging game because, like, when we were in the charms class, you're basically just, like, tapping around, gaining experience points. And then at the end, at least of the demo, you did a spell, and it's just taking your finger and, and tracing a spell out on the screen. Um, and, like, you tap on different characters and just to get experience points. And the, he described it to me as narrative-driven. And basically what that means is there's a lot of dialogue, and you're kind of just tapping through it. And in terms of your Hogwarts house, we did find out about that as well. You are... So what it does is it's like, what house are you hoping to be in? And then they just give you that house. The Sorting Hat gives you that I, house. So I wonder if it's ever going to be the case where you tap one and you don't get the house that <laughs> you really want to be in. Well, I don't think so because the guy was like, we know people want to be in a certain house. Makes sense. Yeah. But this would have been a cool opportunity, I think I said on the, uh, on the podcast a few weeks ago, to hook into Pottermore and just pull your house assignment, maybe. And, and 
I also should have asked how interactive is it going to be from the standpoint of interacting with other people. So let's say you and I both create our avatars. Would they be able to interact? Am I competing against you? Or is it just my game and that's it? Yeah, I think that's it. We did see we're in the same – when you start, you're in the same year as Tonks and Bill, which is cool. He pointed them out to me in the Great Hall during the Sorting Hat Ceremony. And by the way, all the characters look very good. They're, they're as you may have seen in the trailer, they're all, they all look like the movie, the actors who played them in the movies. And they're just adorable. Like, it's a very vibrant, cute look for all the characters. And there's, there's a lot of diversity as well. Yeah. From the students that I saw. Yeah. Which but is Hermione's something... her white. Oh, no, she's not, because she's not in this game yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dumbledore's I, black, though. <laughs> I know that, that that's a point that's been raised many, many times, and I just think that people should know that in this game there is quite a bit of diversity from the different avatars that that we were shown. And in the Great Hall, during Dumbledore's welcome speech, uh, he mentions that we have just a few years to go until Harry Potter's here. <laughs> So I was like, oh, interesting. (laughs) He's looking forward to Harry Potter. I do kind of like how you are in Hogwarts before Harry, because it's like you're you're experiencing Hogwarts at a different time that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not canon. I mean, they say on the website it is, but like J.K. Rowling didn't write any of what's happening in this game. But still, it's cool to know that you are, quote unquote, in Hogwarts before it all began. So it should be normal is what you're saying. Normal, yeah. No big drama. Yeah. I wonder who the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher is. Ooh, yeah. I don't remember seeing, uh, like, a. it was all recognizable teachers. Well, it already been cursed, right? So it's been cursed ever yeah. since he left. So every Maybe. year they got to change, change that position over. <laughs> um, he did say that there actually is a mystery going on in the game. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, hence the title. But Hogwarts it's not Mystery. J.K. Rowling endorsed. I guess not. Uh, I hope it's not something stupid like who stole the potions, and you're spending seven years trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, I also asked how long it might take to play the game, and they didn't really want to like answer that. I think because people might just power through it really quick, so it, it your mileage will vary. But it is seven years, right? You do, yeah, think so. Um, we also did the virtual reality. We did take advantage of our media pass for that. We saw yeah, a line. We did. Saw a line. And we're like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that line was pretty long. By the time that was sound stage, yeah. what twenty two? Yeah, the, the sound. So there, were, like I said, there were two sound stages. One was like all the digital Harry Potter stuff, Pottermore, the app, virtual reality, and then the other one was like books, studio tour. Mina Lima. Yeah, they, they broke it up pretty, pretty well, yeah. I would say. So what do you think of virtual reality? Have you done that before? Fantastic Beasts virtual reality. This is a new game that you can buy for Oculus. Mm-hmm. Nobody has Oculus. I Yeah, I don't have Oculus. Uh, don't even know when the last time was I did something virtual reality-wise, but it was cool. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, I can see kids really enjoying that, especially you know, as the different beasts approach you. Uh, yeah. There, there was some cool stuff they did with uh, Frank, the Thunderbird. Sorry, I had to think of his name. I was going to call him Buckbeak. <laughs> they're, they're basically from the same family anyway. So, Well, so you're, you, when you put on your, your mask thing, um, you're in Newt's suitcase. Oh, yeah. And then there's the four scenes, the woods, the desert, I think, yeah, where Frank is. In Arizona, um, and then a couple of others. Yeah, there was, one with the Akami, one with the Akami, one with the Thunderbird, one with the Bow Truckles, right? Oh yeah, and I think then, you did. I didn't do that one. And the one with um, the thing with the things hanging off its face. Yeah, I forget what that's called. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Big ugly beast. Yeah, um, that's what we'll call it. But so you have a controller and you do spells. And the spells make the beasts do different things. And it was cool because, like, you do a spell and you could turn your body around physically and look back into the center of Newt's case, click a button, and then you would pick the next stage to work in. Um, And, like, 
you could feed the beast and then the beast would react. It was it was neat. I just I think I'm pretty sure what we played was like the whole game. So personally, I've never really been into virtual reality. Um, so personally, I wouldn't buy something like that unless it was like a full blown Wizarding World game, maybe. But this game seemed pretty straightforward, more of a demonstration of sorts of the capabilities of virtual reality. Mm -hmm. But it's cool to try that. And like when you take the glasses off, you really do feel like you just moved between two worlds because that virtual reality, like I said, you can turn around and you're just in a completely, you're in a whole new world and then you take it off and you're like, whoa, okay, mm -hmm. I'm back in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the cool things that they did was you could see on the TV screen what the person was seeing inside the headset. So if Andrew was had his virtual reality goggles strapped on, I could stand, you know, like, 10, 15 feet away and watch on the TV exactly what he was seeing as he was doing the, uh, the spells. Diff different spells with the beast. So I thought that was, that was pretty cool. You know, what was funny. D did you hear Newt talking in your I headphones? Did. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, to the guy who was helping us, I was like, Oh, is that Newt? And he was like, what? I was like, Newt, the character. And he's like, Oh, I have no idea about this this the characters a movie he's he's a purely uh virtual reality guy <laughs> i was like that's weird because it's like it is there's one character human in this game this short little game and it's nude and his face is on the box art right. like I <laughs> well i'll say that guy aside uh most of the people that you meet that are working on these different projects are huge fans and extremely passionate about the area that they're working in and yeah. have a, a really vast knowledge of the books and the movies and i think that's what just adds sort of an extra level to it yeah uh, and just walking around at all the the other areas i know that um there was uh, and we didn't we didn't spend much time at, at these other ones but we did kind of check them out they had a uh, a booth for uh, the cursed child i think yep. they had some of the the costumes yeah there yep uh audible had an area set up yeah by the way, Chris Child got a lot of applause at the opening night thing when they introduced that. Just want to mention it. To all you haters out there. <laughs> yeah, Pottermore, they had like art on display that you could buy. That was something that they introduced within the past year, like Pottermore, Pottermore art for sale. That's why they put Mina Lima in the other hall, <laughs> Yeah, so they didn't uh, Don't compete. beat each other up. Uh, the exhibition, which we talked about, had some stuff on display and, and as I think I, I mentioned earlier, listed out all the different cities that they've been to since the exhibition started and uh, had a big poster up for um, Milan, which I think is May 2018. Yeah, right. So if we have any listeners in Milan, let us know. Why? I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can uh... – <laughs> Send them to the exhibition. <laughs> Let them cover it for us. I'm just kidding. Um, something else that I noticed while here, and some people brought it up to me on Twitter, there's been this new merchandise which mm. could possibly tie into Fantastic Beast 2. Um, so there are a lot of storefronts in Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade, and a lot of them we know. Uh, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. uh Madame Malkin. Yeah, Leaky Cauldron. Morgan and Burks, if you want to go into Nocturne Alley. Right. Um, but there's this one called Globus Monday, and the store sign has been hanging in Diagon Alley since it opened, since Diagon Alley opened, I think. But they just started selling Globus Monday merchandise. And according to the people on Twitter, and from my recollection, this is the first time that they've taken... A storefront, a store name that hasn't been mentioned in the books or movies, that only like discreetly hangs in Diagon Alley, and put it on merchandise. And they have a t-shirt, they have a sweater, they have a coffee mug, they have bag tags, and they have a keychain. Five different pieces of merchandise for this fictional place called Globus Monday. What is it? It's a travel agency. Mm -hmm. What's Newt doing in Fantastic Beasts 2? Traveling. Do you see where I'm going with this, Micah? Uh, Do you see it? Maybe this new Globus Mundi travel agent, see, is going to be in Fantastic Beast 2. Could be. 
Could be. Could be. I just don't know why they would sell all this merchandise for it. It seems very strange. So me, being a trendsetter, being somebody who... Here's, here's the other thing. Wait, who found it, though? Well, the people on Twitter. They well, didn't. no, no, who found the shirt in the store? Oh, you did. Yeah. Yeah, but Thank you, you. you didn't shout out the 60 bucks for this that sweater I, like I did. I did not. <laughs> that I did not do. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, You're a trendsetter. I'm awesome. I'm a trendsetter. Oh, that was it. No, there was something else I was going to say that I can't remember. I just, it just, uh, it seems like there's something here. It seems very strange that they would release this for no reason. Um, I agree. I, I Oh, I know what I was going to say. Hold on. Before I forget. I like merchandise, Harry Potter merchandise that is discreetly Harry Potter. I didn't want to buy the Celebration of Harry Potter 2018 shirt because I don't like it saying a Celebration of Harry Potter. It, like, it has the Hogwarts Express on it. I love that. But I don't like it saying it. It's like, I like when a shirt just says Gryffindor, not Harry Potter Gryffindor. You know? Mm-hmm. I like this Globus Mundi shirt because nobody knows what it is. But I know. <laughs> it's it's like when Ilvermorny, um, we first learned about Ilvermorny, we were hoping there was going to be Ilvermorny merchandise right because then it'd be like it'd be kind of like an inside thing you'd wear the elver morning shirt and people really know harry potter know that you're wearing short a shirt supporting the american wizarding school like that would be cool so that's why i bought this globus monday sweater and i'm probably like the only person who's bought this merchandise so far because <laughs> who would buy that really <laughs> yeah it's, it seems kind of random especially like you said there's no background on yeah there's nothing and we did what it is we did some googling of it and Nothing. No, yeah, I mean it's it's been brought up in the theme park before, but right. But well, though one of our uh, listeners on Twitter did say that Mina Lima were asked about it and were pretty tight lipped. Yeah. So that could also lend to what you're saying, where Fantastic Beast Two, maybe it plays a role. Yep. It's a white sweater too, and it's like a knit sweater, so it's just a very different type of material. Yep. Uh so yeah. Anyway, I wanted to mention that. Maybe seeing more of it later this year. Somebody was also saying maybe it was you that maybe it's Jacob that uses this travel agency to get over. That would make sense. Yeah, because Newt's already back in the UK, presumably, or in France. Oh yeah. So or maybe Tina, Queenie, and Jacob use it to get over to. Yeah. Because uh, in theory, Jacob wouldn't really be able to access it if it is a wizarding travel agency. Mm. You know, and if it's in Diagon Alley, we know Newt's going to Diagon Alley, right? For we his do. book release party. Yeah, it's all coming together. There you go. We're breaking down barriers, and that door's still slamming. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a maid going in and out of a room, and she has like the block on it, so it won't lock uh, every time she goes out. They've been cleaning for some time, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Micah's first hotel visit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway. What would you like to see improved in future years here at A Celebration of Harry Potter that would get Micah to come back? I'm still waiting to uh, head to the Hogshead later on this evening, see if there's a goat there. (laughs) In in all seriousness, (laughs) what we touched on, I think, at the top of the episode, which is with these panels that they're doing, I think they need more integration of Fantastic Beasts. I think that's that's the series now. It, not to say that it's not Potter anymore, but we've we've sort of transitioned into Fantastic Beasts, and to maybe bring on some of the actors to do more with that series as a whole. I think uh, that that's also more newsworthy. So you know, from a coverage standpoint, I think they get a lot more. Uh, you know, from an excitement standpoint and from a, a coverage standpoint, if they. They made it a little bit more focused on Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, I agree. Because um, Fantastic Beasts, it's the exciting thing going on right now. Mm-hmm. That's the hot thing. And and break some news here. Like, make some announcements. Not to say that, you know, the Quidditch for the Ages audiobook and the exhibition going to Milan is not news. I'm sure it is in, in you know, different areas. But, you know, we're at a point here where... You could have released a Fantastic Beast Crimes of Grindelwald trailer. You could have, like you said, thrown out a few stills, put put some other Pottermore breaking news out there. Yeah. 
you know, expand or in the park, like. We know that they're working on something like... Oh, right. There was no park <laughs> announcement. We thought there might be an p- announcement about what they're building. Yeah, that's something I think they could do every year. I mean, I'm, I know they're not going to expand every year, but there's talk about you know the, the additional expansion beyond what already exists, right? We've mm-hmm. seen articles about that. So I think that there's enough here that park-wise, yeah, the nighttime lights was cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, and and definitely worth seeing, but you know we've seen concept art of of this ride, right? And and or, did we? We haven't even seen what what ride? Uh, the, the new, new one, one that's coming? Yeah, no, I thought we did. Mm-mm. Am I making that up? What did you see, Micah? <laughs> what do you know? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I think... thought we talked about it once. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. Like you're in the theme park, make right, an announcement. Should be at a theme park announcement. Yeah. No, I I agree. Well, especially because we know that a ride is actually coming. Mm-hmm. Um. I would like to see, and I, I'm pretty sure it's called Star Wars Celebration. That's the official Star Wars conference. I would love to see the Harry Potter one become more like the Star Wars one. Star Wars breaks a lot of big news at their conference, and they also have fan-oriented panels. I would love to see some uh, some panels run by fans, maybe by the fan sites, like work with... MuggleNet, work with MuggleCast, Leaky Cauldron to put on some really good panels discussing the series on a whole or looking back at the history of the series. Because they do have a bunch of things here. Like they have two discussions, I think, with Mina Lima. They have the cast Q&As. But it would be nice to see more fan-oriented, more of the... Just let the passion of the fandom come through instead of only the officially endorsed brands presenting brands and actors and personalities associated with Harry Potter because it would just add so much more like there's a bunch of stuff happening today and tomorrow but like they could easily double triple the amount of things to go to if they got fans involved somehow like I said I don't mean just pull up any Joe Schmo Harry Potter fan who wants to create their own panel but like reach out to the the fan communities the you know the muggle casts the the fan sites and the other Harry Potter podcast as well. It's yeah, a good idea. Um, I think that was it. I, I, we also mentioned there were some long lines. I don't know really how they would solve that. Maybe they would have to move this over to the convention center or the hotel to put the things in bigger spaces just so people aren't waiting. Um, I just want to make sure that people who pay to come here if they're paying for something that's kind of exclusive, it is exclusive in that it's small, but you still have to wait a while. Like, I don't think that's okay. So mm-hmm. I think I'd like to see them somehow expand so the wait times are are lesser. Yeah. You you mentioned that earlier. If you're you're waiting in line just to get into in- a place where you're waiting on more lines. So uh, I could certainly understand if people were a little bit frustrated by that. Yeah. Uh, that th- th- there's got to be a, and well another way to do that too to your point is add more stuff so you don't have people who are just so concentrated in one area yeah it I know it's well, hard it's hard and especially when you have how many other thousands of people coming through the theme park every single day yeah so that that in their defense they have the the things I've been mentioning like the Mina Lima presentation the fan Q and A's. Those are on an outdoor concert station at Toon Lagoon, and those are kind of, they're outdoor venues, and I, there wouldn't be a line to get in other than, you know, just walking in at the beginning. So in their defense, there are things like that where you don't have to wait in like a 90-minute line, but to see all the stuff we spent a lot of this episode describing, you do have to wait in a long line unless you show up right at the beginning of the day. I know uh, one of our listeners, Haley, she got in, she didn't get in at the start of it, but she only saw half of one uh, show floor, half of one of the shows, half of one of, half of one of the two show floors. So in other words, she saw a quarter of the show floor in total. And, you know, she, cause, because she was waiting mm-hmm. in lines. The one thing I will say, though, that uh, they did really a good job of and they promoted a lot on Friday night was giveaways. So for a lot of people who are here, 
Um, you know, we mentioned just a couple of things that were getting handed out, but uh, I know that they were giving away opening night tickets to Cursed Child. They were giving away, uh, wasn't it a trip to Milan yeah. uh, to see the exhibition? So, uh, and I'm probably leaving out uh, a few other things. I know the the new illustrator of these 20th anniversary editions were going to be he was going to be signing um, the concept art, uh, and so I think they did a really good job um, on that front. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are the types of things I think that can sometimes make it a little bit more digestible um, when you're when you're waiting in the, those lines to know that hey I have a chance to win some of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. All right, well uh, I think that's it. I mean that took an hour. I think that was longer than we were expecting. Yeah, lots to talk about. I know a lot of people out here have a really good time. They did this really touching video at the beginning of it. Um, interviewing some people, and there was these cool close-up shots of people holding wands like right up to their forehead. Um, so the wand kind of splits their face in two, and they did like a montage of all the people in these same in that same pose, and that was really cool. It's it's funny because I was saying to you um, that they don't even need people to work because you know you go to Disney, they have all the characters dressed up. They don't need anybody to dress up because the fans here come dressed up. I mean, so many different things that were seen throughout the course of the uh, of the the couple days that we've been here, right? I saw Hagrid pushing a stroller. I saw some person dressed up as Pickett, was it? In like yeah, full green, full green, and the hands were like long branches, yeah, <laughs> Dumbledores and Crumbs and and all other uh, different characters, and you know, people really get into it. And I'll say, yeah, look, we do this podcast. Um, yeah, but I would still say I'm I'm a pretty casual fan, but to come to a place like this and to see how passionate people are about it and even families though too. You know, young a lot of younger kids that are into it, um, that are that are just getting into the series and they're here and they're just having a really good time. Mm-hmm. Um one funny story to share before we wrap up. Uh, before we got on the water taxi last night to to come back to the hotel, uh, there were these three girls, and uh, one of them had a, a bottle in their hand. And um, the the captain, I guess, of the water taxi comes over to her and uh, says, "Oh, I'm sorry, you can't take alcohol onto the onto the boat." And she's like, "No, no, no, it's butter beer." <laughs> and uh, we thought it was one of those moments that uh, we had to share on the podcast because. The magic of the wizarding world. Yeah. Meanwhile, Yay. meanwhile, I had like a, a coffee cup of hot butter beer. I could have had any kind of alcohol dumped I know, in there. Right. Yeah, but uh, I guess <laughs> I guess the bottle was a a little bit more uh, explicit. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it, it's it's been a cool event, and you mentioned the costumes like that. That's not, I don't you, people I don't think people are allowed to dress up normally and enter the parks. But whenever you go to the Wizarding World, you're reminded of the passion that people have for this series. When you see them walking around in the cloaks, for example, or experiencing the Wizarding World Park for this first time. By the way, if you haven't been in the Wizarding World parks before, this would probably be a good way to go. Because not only do you get to see the parks. Uh, but if you buy like the premium pass thing, you get exclusive after hours access to the park and that free food and the rides. Like somebody we were talking to earlier, I was at the Wizarding World until twelve thirty last night. He said like everything was open and there was no wait because it was just for like the the premium right. package buyers. Um, but so like if you came here for the first time during Celebration of Harry Potter, you'd be experiencing the theme parks plus getting to see some of the actors live. Plus, uh, getting to go to the show floor, if you can <laughs> handle the wait times. Um, it would just be a good way, I think, to get a one big visit, do everything all at once. I agree. Yeah. Uh, if if plus, you haven't been. Plus, you get samples of, like, the Cine concert. Uh, yeah, it gives you ideas. tour. Of course. If, if you're planning for the future, it gives you ideas of things you might want to do. And, and also, you get the rest of the Universal Parks to be able to... Uh, to go to. So uh, I just think that uh, it, I definitely recommend it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I haven't been for this event before, but definitely would uh, would recommend it to, to our listeners. And uh, I think one, I don't remember her name, but shout out to the, the woman at the, because uh, the, these people who work in the parks, by the way, too, are, are into it. Mm-hmm. Um, except for the, uh, I don't know the guy at the Leaky Cauldron who tried to steal my uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. 
Um, but one, but one the girl, yeah. the, the woman at uh, Escape from Gringotts. So I still had my media badge on um, from when we were at stuff earlier in the day, and uh, she let us know that we actually had express passes. So I think the wait at that time wasn't too bad. It was only about thirty minutes, but. Uh, if it wasn't for her saying that, we would have uh, probably ended up riding Escape from Green Gods. And not only that, but the two friends that we were with, uh, Haley and Robin, she actually went and uh, hooked them up with our express passes. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was nice so. of her. Yeah, I, that was actually the, one of the first times I've genuinely enjoyed Escape from Gringotts. I don't know if it was because I was with you, Micah, <laughs> and Eric wasn't here. It was the first time I've sat in the back of the ride. And as I was saying to you, I was like, I don't remember the ride being this rough, like <laughs> getting thrown around. It was pretty intense. I, 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 I wondered if it was because we were sitting in the back of the vehicle, so yeah. you get more whiplash. It's like sitting in the back of a roller coaster. And the the dip is pretty intense, too. Yeah. There's, there's one part where... Uh, Bellatrix casts a spell on the cart and you just you kind of basically flip forward and I've been in the front for that and I thought that was terrible yeah uh, but being in the back it might have been even worse yeah I screamed genuinely this time I was like Aah! that I love Bellatrix slash Helena Bonham Carter in this ride she's so wicked as is Voldemort they they have a couple of scenes together in this ride and just the way they bounce off each other and they're like staring at you viciously wanting to kill you it's like it's really um, I'm a big fan of Escape from Gringotts we didn't go on Forbidden Journey I don't like it I told Micah he could go on if he wants I just don't like being thrown around and I don't like feeling like trapped in that thing yeah, I get anxiety check it out tonight we'll see what what the lines look like <laughs> yeah and we need to get Micah some merchandise he hasn't bought anything yet yeah. Buy, buy a Globus Monday shirt. Be a trendsetter like yeah. me. Well, what else? You said there's you don't need a shirt. They got some other stuff, right? Got a bag tag. Got a <laughs> coffee mug. Oh, <laughs> Globus <geez>. Monday coffee mug. <laughs> what everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> you, you know, it'll it'll be some obscure character that is like sitting in a Globus Monday office. Uh, I'm at gonna the start of Fantastic <laughs> Beast Two. I'm gonna show up to Fantastic Beast Two midnight screening or whatever the first screening I get to wearing this sweater. And I better walk out of it of the movie proud to be wearing my Globus Monday sweater, or I'm burning it right there at the movie theater. <laughs> All right, well, that's what we have for everybody this week. We'll get back to normal uh, on next week's episode of MuggleCast, which will be our first one of February. Any parting words? Just just do a couple plugs. Uh, we have been tweeting a lot on uh, the MuggleCast Twitter, so if you want to see more coverage, including. Uh, me experiencing that Fantastic Beasts virtual reality, uh, a couple photos from the Hogwarts Castle, sh Castle show, you can go to twitter.com slash mugglecast um, and facebook.com slash mugglecast. doesn't have the posts, but we'll, we'll get some posts up there. Maybe throw all the photos up there. Yeah. Um, and we would love your support over at patreon.com slash mugglecast. I got a pay off this $60 Globus Monday sweater somehow. So, <laughs> and, and all of our butterbeers. So we would love your support over there. And, uh, we mentioned this earlier in the show, but the giveaways uh, that we do each month are for, uh, patrons, those who support the show. And, uh, we have some pretty cool items that we've picked up here. Who knows? Maybe we'll pick up a few more before we leave They're Uh, as Andrew said, exclusive to Mina Lima, you can't get them anywhere other than, uh, on their website or at their uh, store in London. So these are pretty cool uh, exclusive items that we're going to be giving away. Yeah. And uh, check out the MuggleCast website. And if you, I know there have been some listeners here. We haven't seen many, but we would love your thoughts on how Celebration of Harry Potter went. If you agree or disagree with our thoughts, and we'll get your thoughts on the next episode. So email them in to MuggleCast at gmail.com or give us a call. I don't have the phone number handy because <laughs> i'm not sitting in front of my computer um but we'd love your feedback even if you've been on in past years what what do you think of um what do you think of this yearly event that they are doing let us know all right micah when are we going back to the park it's oh my god it's 5 30 soon yeah i think we have to go soon because it doesn't it close at eight Eight or nine? 
Our number, by the way, is one nine two zero three Muggle. <laughs> so give us a call. One nine two zero three six eight four four five three. All right, we're gonna head back to the parks. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Universal, for having us. Uh, oh, we have to jump over to that construction site to see what they're building. That is right. I thought I was going to push you over the construction walls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no? After after I have a few dragon scale. All right. Players. There you go. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.